let us pray. God of love, stir up the anticipation of reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. For thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel. And the Levitical priest shall never lack, shall never, excuse me, shall never lack a man in my presence to offer burnt offerings, to make grain offerings, and to make sacrifices for all time. The word of the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made. The days are surely coming. Really? But when you look around, does it seem obvious that the fulfillment of God's promises are close at hand? Do you see signs of God's rain returning to the earth? Do the signs point toward growing peace on earth and goodwill among people? Is an obvious end to war and suffering and disease and pain and death clearly on the horizon? The days are surely coming. And yet, and yet division seems to be growing everywhere. Divisions between parents and children, divisions between men and women, divisions between liberals and conservatives, divisions between nations, divisions between the rich and the rest of us. Our news is filled with stories about violence perpetrated in the most absurd places for the most absurd reasons. A generation of children have grown up with active shooter drills, and mass shootings have happened at concerts, movie theaters, churches, malls. It seems the more technology promises to bring us together, the more isolated we become. It seems the more medical breakthroughs there are, the more new problems and diseases are discovered. The days are surely coming. Really? It often doesn't look like it around here most of the time. But that's not unusual. In fact, things looked worse back in Jeremiah's day. Judah, the southern of the two kingdoms of the Hebrews, and at this point the only one left, well, Judah had been going downhill for decades. Now the Babylonians are in the process of taking over. The city of Jerusalem is under siege. And that siege is one that will ultimately last for over a year before the city falls. Like most besieged cities, the growing scarcity of food and water is only eclipsed by the growing rate of disease within their walls. And Jeremiah, God's prophet, is in the midst of it all, but he cannot help. For his faithfulness in speaking God's message of judgment upon the people of Jerusalem and Judah, he has been thrown in prison. 
right next to the palace in Jerusalem. And this, this unfortunately happens often to those who dare to speak truth to power. And there from his prison cell, Jeremiah spoke these words, The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made. Jeremiah was arguably in a worse situation than we are. And while many of us may suspect that things are going to get worse before they get better, that was definitely true in Jeremiah's case. The defeat of Jerusalem was a foregone conclusion. It wasn't a question of if. It was only a question of when. In the midst of the fear and starvation, the disease, the death, and his own unjust imprisonment. And in the face of certain defeat and exile, Jeremiah spoke God's words of hope and promise. Jeremiah reminded Judah on the eve of its darkest hour yet, that no matter what their reality appeared to be, no matter what their reality was, their God was still a God who is faithful. Which is why we, now, with the darkest day of the year approaching quickly, why we now celebrate the light. It's why we continue to gather here and worship this God of promise despite the signs that the world around us find us increasingly irrelevant. It's why we continue to listen to the wisdom of ancient texts and sing ancient songs and pray ancient prayers to an ancient God because God will fulfill the promises that God has made. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. The days are surely coming. Despite all signs to the contrary, we know this to be true. We know this because our God has already proven faithful. Jeremiah's prophecy comes in two parts here. A righteous branch will spring up from David, and that righteous branch shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In a few short weeks... We will again celebrate the fulfillment of that first promise. We will celebrate the birth of Emmanuel, God with us. We will honor and worship the Messiah, God's anointed king from David's line, the Prince of Peace, the bright and morning star, the great physician, the good shepherd our Savior. We know this God of ours is faithful because God has proven faithful before, over and over and over again. So we again begin this Advent season of hope and expectation and waiting, as if a month is a long time to wait after 2,000 years. And we do so Knowing that the complete fulfillment of God's promises is not a question of if, it is only a question of when. This is not like playing the lottery and hoping that someday we'll pick those lucky numbers. This is not like rooting for our favorite team year after year, desperately hoping they somehow claw their way back to the top. It's more like those times when Babe Ruth would step up to bat, point to a spot in the outfield, and then hit a home run to that spot. 
Or when Muhammad Ali would reveal in rhyme, no less, in which round he would knock out his opponent before their match ever began. I mean, that was impressive, but they were still predictions. They weren't guarantees. We have a promise from God. We have a guarantee. If God says it, then it is so. It's like the referee indicating a touchdown. It doesn't matter how long it takes for the scoreboard to reflect the new score because it isn't their decision. It's the referees. And they've already made it so. It's like a judge declaring a defendant innocent. It may take time for them to get released from jail, but they will be released because the judge's decision is what makes them innocent, is what makes them free. God has promised that a king from David's line will rule and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. Jesus, that Messiah of which God spoke through Jeremiah, also himself promised to return. All will be redeemed. All will be renewed. I can't tell you when this will happen, but I can tell you that it will happen. Just like when the dark night sky begins to take on a a deep blue hue, I can tell you that dawn will soon break over the horizon. I may not be able to tell you exactly how soon, but I can tell you that it will happen. So keep watching. Until that time, we live our lives in really one long season of Advent. We have received the promises. They're ours. And they are partially fulfilled. The sky is changing. The rest, the rest we take on faith. And we wait. We wait for that glorious day when the ultimate fulfillment of God's promises finally happens. Amen.
stand as you are able. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand. In anticipation of the coming Messiah, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, you inspire the prophets to bring good news to a world in pain. Continue to give us hope when we are faced with despair. Lord, in your mercy, just as your people cried out for your help, so all of creation cries out for restoration and healing. Spur us to action, caring for all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Raise up prophets among us to speak your truth and call us into the work of justice and equity for all people. Lord, in your mercy. Bring healing and wholeness to those who are living with physical or mental illness or other difficulties, especially Michael Myers, who is having hip replacement surgery, Dan Jarris, who is, who, as he recovers from a seizure, Mary Mooney's friend David Learman, as he suffers from Parkinson's disease and moves from the hospital into rehab, Kieran Nichols' friend Roger Bastarash, as he suffers from back pain. Jim Sorowski, who is recovering from shoulder surgery. And Debbie Jones, who is having hip surgery soon. Mary Taylor's relative, Chris, after her recent diagnosis of cancer. Judy Hunt's brother, Ron Kling, for strength and healing. Help us to show your comfort and care through our support of them and those who care for them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Strengthen peacemakers in war and torn communities throughout the world, especially in Ukraine, Israel, and Palestine, that all might work together to bring about your reign of justice and peace for all people. Lord, in your mercy. Throughout history, you have uplifted leaders in the church whose commitment to your word sustained the priesthood of all believers. Help us to follow their example in providing leadership for our faith communities until we are united with them at the end of time. Grant to all who mourn your comfort and peace, especially Carol Mitchell and her daughter Heidi after the death of Carol's son, Carol's son and Heidi's brother, Jerry, and Chris, Joe, and Melissa after the death of their husband and father, Kurt Mason. Strengthen their hope in your promises of the resurrection and life everlasting in your glory. Lord, in your mercy, we lift all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, into your loving arms, trusting in your love and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of God's peace.
celebratory response. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, you have given us all we need, including the gift of your Son. Receive now our gifts as a sign of our gratitude and faithfulness, and use them for your good work in the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, you comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new. In the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness, and so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it for all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Here at Atonement, we believe that all are welcome at God's table, and all who desire the gifts of God are welcome to come forward and receive communion, or if you just prefer a blessing, just come up with your arms crossed. We'll happily give you a blessing instead. You will be dismissed by rushers, ushers by row, and you will come up and line up in this center aisle, and you will pass this, the, the center table where you will see hand sanitizer if you'd like, and individually wrapped gluten-free wafers. And then you will come to the first station and receive a wafer with gluten if you'd like, second station red wine, or white grape juice, and we invite you to leave your cups in the baskets as well. Table is set. All is ready. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Now I'd like to invite the communion assistants forward at this time.
I invite you to please rise as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. God, for whom we wait, in this meal you give us a foretaste of that day when the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. So all of the following announcements and more are made in our Sunday announcement email, and I invite you to check that for more information. We're happy to get you signed up for that if you don't receive that yet in the Connect cards, which are directly in front of you in the seat back in front of you. In the welcome area, as you go out today, you will see the Nitwit Silent Auction on this side, um, the not the organ side, the north side. Um, if you don't receive that email, and you, uh, sorry, I've already said that. So it, uh, there are handmade goods from our Nitwits group. They're great Christmas gifts, and half of the proceeds will be going to the Muskego Food Pantry in honor of Jean Albers. Also, you'll see that there is Christmas meals for all people's church. You can pick up a list to contribute to our food drive for a Christmas meal at all people's church. That information is also on the screen right now. If you go out, you will see a small Christmas tree just directly behind the, the sanctuary, and you can look at that for Operation Christmas and help bring joy to teens at Joy House and the Cross Trainers Academy at the Milwaukee Rescue Mission. You can stop by that tree and grab a tag for a gift to order. And there are all these service opportunities wrap up next Sunday, December 10th. Our Reconciling Christ core team has decided to postpone that second round of educational sessions planned for December 5th and 7th. We had, we were really happy with our first round. We want to make sure that we, that we make that second round really worth your time as well. And so we're putting together a book club to dig deeper into Unclobber by Colby Martin in January 2024. Unclobber is a book about that kind of interrogates and, and gets a little bit better understanding of some of those passages that, that have been used against the LGBT community over time. So join us for that in January. Next Sunday is the final Sunday to order poinsettias by, so you can order online by next Sunday. You can get a red or peppermint one and pick up your poinsettia after Christmas Eve worship. Speaking of Christmas Eve, Christmas is around the corner, and next Sunday we're going to be kicking our first really Christmas and not Advent event next Sunday with our Kids Blast Christmas program at 9.30. All children are welcome to join in that. Everyone's invited to, to worship and enjoy that special Sunday in the life of our church, and then plan to stick around after that 9.30 service to attend the Advent Festival. Our children's ministry team is working hard to put together fun crafts for people of all ages. And so that, that Advent craft time and festival will be instead of a 1045 service. There's no 1045 service next week. Now, speaking of Christmas worship, Blue Christmas is on Thursday, December 14th. And then the following Sunday, we will have the Festival of Music at all three services on December 17th. And Christmas Eve worship will be on Sunday, December 24th, which means that there is no regular Sunday morning worship that Sunday. And there will be candle lighting at all four of our Christmas Eve worship services. And so if you're interested in joining that festival choir, which is for the Festival of Music on December 17th, join the choir here at a number of upcoming rehearsals, including this Wednesday at 6, or at 7 um, to 9, then Friday, December 8th from 7 to 9, 
Wednesday, December 13th from 7 to 9, and then Saturday, December 16th from 10 to noon. Thank you all for your support of the Coats for Kids drives and the Youth Bake Sale. Together we collect over 100 coats to share with All People's Church, and our youth ministry fundraiser raised $1,000, 500 of which will be going towards more coats for All People's Church. Thank you for your support of that. And finally, Welka's Lydia Circle is hosting fellowship this morning in honor of Kathy's house. In the fellowship hall, we invite you to stop by, grab a treat, join us for some time of refreshments and community, and also get a photo taken at our church directory photo booth. We are adopting a new church management software for in January 2024, and that includes our online church directory. And one of the ways to make it better is to have you be in it. So we welcome you to get your picture taken in our new directory, and we're doing that in the next three Sundays. That's all the announcements I've got for you today. I invite you to please rise as you are able to receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.